<sighs> Time to go to work. And we got some tile going on here for the downstairs bathroom. Just spent like three weeks on this upstairs railing. You like it? So I've been wiring this whole house for the last several months. I just finished up the kitchen since I've been working on the cabinets uh, these last couple of days. But I have all of this extra electrical wire and I've been trying to think of what can I make jewelry wise with all of this copper wire that I've got. <laughs> Back to the jewelry studio. Okay, so we got this 14 gauge copper 20 amp copper wire that we wired the whole house with. The question is, what can we make with this? It's a little too thick because this is a 14 gauge and normal jump rings like this little guy is like 20 gauge. Hmm, so we're going to need this or this or that or that or this one mm -hmm. a pair of pliers so we can grip it some bolts we got a bolt a couple bolts and <laughs> we're gonna need that let's see it's a little too tiny and cramped in this studio let's go outside and find something strong and sturdy to do this with. Okay, I think I found something pretty strong. So let's uh, let's bolt this down. We got the thing in, in our copper wire here. Okay, I think that'll be strong enough. <laughs> nice and smooth. It's starting to get pretty hard. It was soft. When it gets hard, we're going to have to anneal it. Usually I can only go like maybe three or four holes and then anneal. I'm going to go one more hole. That's nice. Yeah, it's about as hard as we can get. We're gonna have to anneal it. Woo! <laughs> Let's go anneal it.
now that it's been annealed, see how much softer it is now? See, I can like, I can bend it really easy. So we're gonna go back out. <laughs> okay, it's super long now. <laughs> this will be the last pull at one millimeter. I'm gonna put oil on it, and I have been putting oil on it to help pull it smooth. Nice and smooth. Oh, that's nice. This is a lot more than I uh, thought I was going to make. <laughs> and there you go. Some 20 gauge. <laughs> and now to make the jump rings. This is actually a jig that I made out of an old drill press that I had with a broken down motor. See, it, it has the drill press uh, chuck here. Uh, the base I cut off the, the base of it and used it as mine. And then this was like the, the stand portion. And then I used like one of those old window cranks at the end so I can hand turn it. And then I have just an, a bunch of old uh, drill bits, the longer ones here of different uh, widths and thicknesses. Uh, I, I got like a four and a half millimeter one. I went ahead, I think I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with a three and a half millimeter one right here. So, let's roll out. We're going to need about a hundred jump rings, nice and tight. So, really pull on it. Yeah. <laughs> if you thought I was gonna cut 200 jump rings with a handsaw, that's not gonna happen. This is what I do. Wayne, the closet door this can This is gonna take a while. So can be open. Go ahead and put on a good movie. Let's put some jump rings together. <laughs> I can't have breakfast today, Mom. I got to try out today. I got a nervous stomach. Don't want to throw it from the chair lives again. Had to buy that guy a new hat last time. First thing you got to do is open up all these jump rings and clean them all up. Come on, sir. Yes, sir. Johnny. Four weeks. 20 papers. That's two dollars. Plus two. Gee, Johnny, I don't have a dime. Sorry. Didn't ask for a dime. Two dollars. Well, uh, it's <laughs> funny. See, my mom had to leave early to take my, my brother to school and my dad to work because... Two dollars. Cash. See, the problem here is is that my little brother this morning got his arm caught in the microwave and, and uh, my grandmother dropped acid and she freaked out and hijacked a school bus full of Penguin, so it's kind of a family crisis, so we'll come back later, but... You know? Okay, here's the, the procedure. Smith, the rest will be We're going to I put... I'm telling you, Charles. Two loops together. Charles. Charles. We're going to do wait two wait, and two. Second. So two loops something. together, and then this two loops snow. where it's you put everywhere. them apart. Have you any idea what the you put street two loops, value of this mountain is? Two loops Charles. together. Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold two loops spread them apart and we're gonna make a Byzantine. Outrageous! I think I froze the left half of my brain! Look! I can't move my right arm! Will you get serious? Oh, look, dude! It's Christmas Eve! I could be home right now, drinking this monster eggnog my brother makes with lighter fluid? Now you've been staring over that edge for hours. And people die down there. And dying when you're not really sick is really sick, you know? Really? Charles, this is very important to me. I mean, really. I mean, if I don't believe in myself, I'm nothing. I'll be as bad as my neighbor, Ricky Smith, who sits around crocheting all day and, and snorting nasal spray. I gotta do it. He snorts nasal spray? You know where I can score some? Are you gonna help me or not? All right, all right, all right. I'll tell you what to do. 
go that way really fast. If something gets in your way, turn. Okay, so this is how we're going to make our Byzantine bracelet. You do a two, two, and two to start. Very simple. Here's my Byzantine so far. Okay, so at the end, you can see the two, two, and two. So this is what we're going to do. You take the two. I like to take it and just hold it like that. So you can see two, two, and two at the very end. And at the end, we have the two, two, and two jump rings left. So what we're going to do, grab it. Once you've got the two, two, and two, take the top, split it, pull it up, split it again, and grab it. And then open, I, I take a pick and I open it up. Then you start all over again. Grab two jump rings. Feed one through. Now the harder part is trying to get that second one in there. So make sure, because I'm doing it really tight. And tighten them up. So a long time ago, I was at this craft show in Tennessee, and one of the other vendors stopped by my booth, and she was looking at all my pendants and said, oh, you know what, you can make a lot more money if you sold these pendants with chains on them. And she said, hey, if you stop by my booth, I can teach you how to make some chains. So I stopped by, and she had all these cool chains made out of jump rings and cool little pendants and everything. And so she spent like an hour with me teaching me how to uh, make all these chains. And she even had the little booklet that she had made with all the, uh, the different kind of chains that you could make, explain a detailed, you know, step by step how to, how to put them all together. And that's what I used to make this Byzantine bracelet was her, my first introduction to making chain. So thank you so much for teaching me.